Hello and welcome again to part 3 of my Python training series. And in this part I'm going to go over arrays and dictionaries. So let's go into scripting. And add a new file and call it arrays tutorial. Okay. So, what is an array? An array is basically the problem that was, or the solution to the problem that an integer can only hold one value, or a string can only hold one value. If I wanted to have the sentence, hello, my name is Ben, printed out, but I wanted each individual word to be separate, there would not be any way I would be able to do that um, except for creating single variables. But with arrays, you can uh, basically have it so that each string is in, um, in, in the array. That was kind of a bad example, but uh, let me let me go and just show you what I mean. So we'll have an array of um, I don't know. Um, let's say uh, numbers. We'll just call it numbers, and it will be. So to declare an array, you have to do open and close brackets like that, okay? Um, square brackets, and it'll just be zero. Or uh, let's not start at zero because that will uh, confuse us later. Uh, we'll print out um, five, four, three, two, one. So we'll see that each one, uh, you'll see that each co uh, comma, I'm separating by comma, each, gosh, each, I'm sorry, each value I'm separating by comma, and I'm just doing it like that. And you can put in as many as you want. And basically, it's kind of like a dictionary. I can print out print out the value of dic uh, numbers at value 3. Okay, and it will give me not 3, but 2. Because, as with all programs, all programming languages, uh, you start counting at 0. So this is actually, so if I add in a comment here, that's 0, that's 1, that's 2, that's 3, and that's 4. So this is the zero position in the array. This is the one position. Okay, so each, each of those um, pertains to an index. So the number in the third index would be two. So just keep that in mind. That's something that is very important. So if we rerun this, uh, run script, and uh, open up our terminal, oh, which I actually already had open. Um, you'll see that we uh, got two printed out. Okay, but there's something even cooler. You can make an array, let's just comment that out. You can make an array of um, strings. So you can do strings, r, r for array, equals, um, say, uh, this is an example. Okay, so then uh, um, <clears throat> obviously as before, you can do just print numbers at, uh, or I'm sorry, print strings underscore r at position two, and you would get an. Yeah, an. Okay, so something cool about arrays. I uh, just I just realized is that you don't have to do the string method when you go to uh, print out the number in the array. It actually converts it at a string for you. Uh, that must be a built-in method of the array uh, that they made. Okay, so that's cool and all, but how is that really helpful? Well, in Blender, everything is stored in arrays. Uh, I'm going to start going into Blender uh, in greater depth later, but I'm actually going to show you something. Um, if you go down here, you see that we have this little terminal right here. And don't worry if you don't understand this right now, but I'm just going to show you an example of how Blender stores uh, things in arrays. So if you do, if you type in bpy.data.autocomplete, you can see that we have all of these things. I did control space to autocomplete, by the way. And if I did materials.materials, .materials, hold 
complete. Period. Auto complete. Um, and I did enter. Oh, I'm sorry. Up arrow to go back. Press enter. You see that we have BPY underscore collection zero blend data materials. So right here we have ourselves an array, and there is only one material. So obviously that's all that's printed out. You'd also do BPY dot data dot objects and enter, and you can see that we have three objects or four objects actually in our in our scene. Um, I'm not sure where the fourth is exactly. It might be something that's more abstract. But yeah, you can see that those are arrays right there. So Blender uses arrays um, to store values. So pretty cool. There's also uh, one more thing that I want to show you guys. It's called a dictionary. And a dictionary basically will have an index of a string, and it will have a value that that string pertains to. So what do I mean? Dictionary equals and you do a curly bracket for this one to declare it. Um, string um, a dog, okay? And a dog colon is an animal. Okay, that's cool. Quotes, rock, quotes, is a hard object comma, um, I don't know, microphone, colon, records my voice. Okay, so basically, instead of typing in dictionary at position one, since po position one is taken up by technically two things, you do dictionary at index dog, and it will give you is an animal. So that's pretty cool. You can do this for, you know, very practical reasons like uh, saving, um, uh, I don't know, phone numbers or addresses or something. Um, and yeah, if you're writing a program, this is actually a really practical, real life uh, way that you could, you know, store things. And I'm sure it's used for doing that. So if I were to type out print, um, we'll just do a sentence. We'll do a dog. Uh, do a space and then quotes so that we have a space in between our two values. We're going to actually do something called concat concatenation. Concatenation? I don't know how to spell it. Um, I spelled uh, concatenation or something like that. Anyways, a dog, you do a plus sign. This is the concatenation I was talking about. I don't know how to pronounce it. Plus um, dictionary at position quotes dog so you have to know the exact name of your index that you're looking for but if you do then you'll be able to get the definition per se of that so if I were to run that run script you can see we have a sentence a dog is an animal so is an animal was printed out and a dog was printed out um, by us and so that's really cool uh, that's um, a really really, really useful uh, tool, and it's, you know, useful both in real life and uh, with, uh, with Blender. So that basically concludes my introduction to Python series. Um, well, Python, uh, just regular Python is what I mean. I will be doing a lot more with Python in Blender um, in later tutorials, um, and I hope you guys are looking forward to that, and if you're not, Please subscribe to my channel, youtube.com slash mythirddimension. Um, and if you do, you'll obviously get um, be able to view the future uh, tutorials that I make where I go deeper into using Blender with Python and things like um, creating our own materials, automating uh, the material creation process, uh, using it in the game engine, using it to um, basically make your life a whole lot easier in Blender. Um, so, yeah, thank you for watching this, and please subscribe.